Good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 Women of Concern, brought to you with thanks to EY, a celebration of change makers in our world of impact, achievement and opportunity. We are Women of Concern. We are a global community dedicated to creating positive change for women around the world. We believe that all people are equal in rights and must be treated with respect and dignity. Persistent inequalities present in all societies mean that women and girls are disproportionately affected by poverty and oppression. Girls who miss out on education to take on caring responsibilities. Women who have no access to health care and food for themselves and their families. Together, we work to build bridges, remove barriers, change attitudes and improve women's lives. We take necessary risks balanced with sound judgment. Which allows us to work in the most challenging contexts. Concern puts women at the forefront of its work. We have endless potential. Women are more connected than ever before. And together we can move towards a more peaceful and prosperous world. Join us to help transform the lives of women everywhere. We are Women of Concern. Women of Concern. Women of Concern. Women of Concern. Hello from Concern's headquarters in Dublin. And you're very welcome to the 2021 Women of Concern, which before the pandemic was an actual lunch event, but for now is more of a virtual lunchtime get together for those of you who support Concern's mission or perhaps are interested in finding out more. Now, the theme of today's event is Changemakers. And over the next half hour or so, we're going to be taking a whirlwind tour through some of the countries where Concern operates, including Haiti, Kenya and Malawi. We'll be hearing from friends of Concern like Samantha Barry and Shakira. And there'll be powerful musical and spoken word performances from Loa, Feli Speaks, and a very talented trio from one of the world's most disadvantaged neighborhoods. You can comment through the chat section and there are links to follow for more information on anything you see here today. Our guest of honor today is a woman who has played a key role in advancing human rights, tackling discrimination and violence against women and girls, and promoting inclusion and equality, both here in Ireland and around the world. Monica McWilliams is the real deal. And in a while, you'll see what happened when Monica and concerned board member Kevin Doris Ejon got together in Belfast to discuss gender, equality and human rights. First, though, 90 seconds to remind ourselves about what concern is and does. Concern Worldwide is an international humanitarian organisation founded in 1968 and dedicated to ending extreme poverty, whatever it takes. Our DNA is Irish, but our mission is global. Concern deliberately seeks out communities that are vulnerable, economically challenged and underserved and partners with them to create sustainable development programs in health, education, water and sanitation and livelihoods. And we respond to emergencies. Experience has taught us that women and girls have the skills, drive, ingenuity and leadership to change the world. Our job is to help facilitate that change. Thanks to our incredible supporters, last year Concern was able to reach 36 million people across 23 countries. Over 20 million of those were women and girls. But it's not just about the numbers. Yes, we dig wells, distribute food and train teachers. But more fundamentally, this work, this cause, is about sharing opportunity, promoting dignity, showing compassion, driving equality, demonstrating accountability, and most of all, it's about exercising humanity. My name is Dominic McSorley. I'm the Chief Executive of Concern Worldwide. And I want to say how delighted I am that we're honoring Monica McWilliams a woman who has dedicated her life to giving and compassion. And compassion is what is needed now more than ever. It's been a tough year, and I want to pay tribute to the 4,000 concerned staff, and in particular, the women 
who work with concern. In some of the toughest parts of the world, Somalia, Syria, South Sudan and Afghanistan, where being a female humanitarian aid worker in itself brings additional dangers and risk. And yet these women are there on the front lines of extraordinary need, bringing humanity and compassion every day to communities caught up in crisis. In my 40 years with Concern, I have been proud and privileged to see every next generation step up as dedicated, as committed, and actually even better equipped than my generation was to deal with the global challenges of climate change, of conflict, and of hunger. And one of these people is Victoria Jean-Louis, who is six and a half thousand kilometers away in Port-au-Prince. And let me introduce you to her. Thank you, Dominic. Hi, everyone. I am Victoria Jean-Louis, and I'm the Programs Director for Concern Worldwide here in, here in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I joined Concern for a number of reasons, but I'd say what, what really got me, what really tugged at my heart was that the, among Concern's values is, is the word courage. Concern, uh, you know, we make a commitment to be courageous. And the truth is that to tackle the, the problems of our day, both the ones that our generation, my generation has created, but also those that we've inherited, takes tremendous courage, takes a certain level of steadfastness. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, if concern is standing in courage, then, then I'm standing with them. Our mission here at Concern really is to reach those who are the farthest behind, those whom are the most marginalized, those sometimes whom we don't even know exist or who have been forgotten. And in certain contexts, like here in Haiti, unfortunately, that are or have become very fragile contexts, you know, here in Haiti now, nearly half of the population is food insecure. And that means that families, you know, thousands and thousands and millions in this case of families are unable to feed themselves. That's a fragile context. That's a difficult um, issue to tackle, but that's what we do. Conflict and hunger and climate change. We're ambitious about making those changes. But you know, that's not something that I, I claim the concern can do alone, nor that I think we were meant to. I think these major issues, these big, um, bold dreams of, of change and efforts of change are meant to be tackled together. And so I, I think very often, I'm quite grateful to be very honest, for those who have also shown an act of, of courage and, and generosity, you know, the general public in, in Ireland and in the US and, and well beyond that, who have dared to think about others, to love others and to give to others well beyond their own homes or their own countries, places that they may or may not have ever been. And that is the collective, I think, that can and will bring about the change that we all desire. So I'm very grateful that I can be a part of that change, that I can see the difference that all of our collective work and all of our courage is contributing to. Si ouais que mélodie que vous apprenez aujourd'hui, c'est comme ça me sentir. Ah ouais, moi t'as élé, élé à moi, qui est-ce qui capte pour venir délivrer? C'est celle de toi, c'est moi, moi qui a compté sur un petit bout de papier, pour me dire que moi désolé.
Much of the work Concern does these days is centred around shifting the balance of economic and social power to help women bring positive change to their communities and eliminate extreme poverty. As Samantha Barry, editor-in-chief at Glamour, discovered when she visited the southern African nation of Malawi, the results can be very powerful. Concern do a lot of things. Health, education, nutrition, emergency response. The list is really, really long. But underpinning all of that is a driving ambition to make sure that women and girls in some of the poorest countries in the world actually get to realise their full potential. I'm here in Malawi and I'm delighted to go and meet some of the women of Concern. In a country where women have traditionally done much of the work and seen little in return, the tide is turning. Stawa and Esme are two of the strongest women you could meet, and not so long ago, they were also amongst the poorest. Everyone in this village knew that my children used to sleep hungry. Sometimes my children would not go to school because they did not have enough food. Both are part of Concern's groundbreaking graduation program, a systematic approach to helping the very poorest families lift themselves out of poverty permanently. It involves self-development, new agricultural techniques, business training and mentorship with regular cash payments to help give them the time and space they need to develop. My life has changed in so many ways. Even my neighbours are surprised because they did not expect that I would have the things that I have now. I am able to build a house. Uh, now we eat three times a day and my children are now also able to go to school. Concern has also been working to influence the attitudes of men towards gender equality. Jowdy is proof that it can work. He started to shoulder more of the domestic duties and share responsibilities with his wife, Mary. Some of his male friends wonder if maybe she slipped him some juju juice or love potion. But there's no magic here, just hard work and determination, of which the women of Malawi have plenty. Hi, I'm Siobhan from Concern. One of the ways you can support our work with women around the world is to help us raise vital funds. We have many fantastic ways in which you can get involved from mountain trekking to marathon running, organizing a cake sale or a table quiz, holding a local collection in your community, or even setting up your own online fundraiser. It's whatever works for you. Your support can literally transform lives and we'll be here to help you every step of the way. Violence and discrimination against women and girls is on the rise, driven in part by the isolation and despair experienced by so many during the pandemic lockdowns and economic struggles brought on by COVID. Well, Concerns Equality Advisor Bernadette Crawford has more insights into this incredibly important issue and some of the solutions being put into practice. Violence against women and girls is a global pandemic, underreported, often hidden, poorly addressed, and now seriously exacerbated by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. During displacement and times of crisis, the threat significantly increases for women and girls. For those affected, it has severe physical, psychological, and economic consequences. In countries like Sierra Leone, Lebanon, and Syria, Concern has been providing support to women and girls to ensure that they can access life-saving services, including emergency cash assistance, legal support, and protection hotlines. But as with most problems, the real long-term solution is prevention. Experience has taught us that actively engaging with men to influence attitudes and behaviours that are deeply rooted and passed down through generations is the most impactful way to achieve lasting change. Currently, we are implementing such programmes in 14 countries, from Malawi to Liberia, Niger to Bangladesh. Women talk about the shifts and changes in communications, husbands helping out with chores, and overall more harmony and peace in the home. Mm. 
Banga nkanza wa mbili kumenya ntai na kumwa atila kumano kazi wano ya. Tende ulipu. So golo li ndibiwa na buino, muntima nubondo kukuma. Equally important is economically empowering women. Not only does it give women security if they have to leave their husbands, but our own research has shown that husbands respect their wives more when they are contributing economically to the household, reducing levels of gender-based violence and shifting the power imbalance in the process. Success doesn't come quickly, but we've seen real transformational change in many of the communities Concern has partnered with, and we're excited about the potential for bringing this work to scale. In the meantime, Concern will continue to advocate with partners at national and international levels to achieve gender equality and protection for women and girls. Gender-based violence is just one of the areas of advocacy and activism in which today's guest of honour, Monica McWilliams, has been prominent for many years. A scholar and a practitioner, she has been a driving force behind campaigns opposing discrimination, promoting peace and tackling poverty across four decades. Through the toughest days of the Northern Ireland conflict, she campaigned on behalf of women of all creeds and political beliefs, and she was a signatory to the Good Friday Peace Agreement. She has been an elected member of the Northern Ireland Assembly and has shared her knowledge and experience with women from Afghanistan to Colombia to Syria. Kevin Doris Ejon is an award-winning Ugandan journalist who now calls Ireland home and sits on the board of directors of Concern Worldwide. An admirer of Monica McWilliams, Kevin jumped at the opportunity to spend time gaining insights into a life of activism and action. There have been so many trailblazers in the struggle for equality and empowerment around the world. And Monica McWilliams has undoubtedly been one of them. Her legacy is amazing. And she's not finished yet. But the road ahead is tough. And there's so much to learn from those who led the way. That's why I'm privileged to be here in Belfast to learn from one of the best. My mother was always saying in our house with five small children, keep the peace, keep the peace. And of course I was the rowdy one probably, she had to say it to me more than anyone. And I was very um, struck by the fact that the boys were allowed to do a lot more than the girls. And when we went to pick potatoes in the fields, the boys got paid twice as much as us girls. And I started, I was only about 10, I started a bit of a strike about how the farmer shouldn't be doing that. Mm. University was a huge liberation. I was becoming independent. I was studying su subjects like anthropology, which was teaching me about other parts of the world. And Paula Ferreri was writing a book on the pedagogy of the oppressed, mm. which was about start where the people are. And it impressed me so much. Um, so those were formative years, but they were also the worst years mm. at university because mm. it was the height of the troubles. Terrible things happened. I witnessed too many murders. Because of that tragedy, I couldn't wait to get out of it. Um, and left and went to Michigan, I won a scholarship. And that was a different experience again because I worked with African-American students um, and that's where I cut my political teeth. Apartheid was at its height at that time and we were in a campaign for nuclear disarmament. So that's where I put my efforts and energy into the anti-apartheid movement. And actually sitting in Detroit and the Michigan, the University of Michigan, I would watch the news at night and actually plead to be able to come home mm -hmm. because I felt that I had a choice. Many of the students there didn't, like mm -hmm. the ones from South Africa were in exile. But I had a choice and I thought, I've got the skills, I'm going home. And I could have stayed there and made my life but I was desperate to come home and contribute. Mm. And I still feel that way today about people who have skills at whatever level can give of those skills. And it, what can we do? Everything. It's uh, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. And I've done every part of the jobs from 
working in women's aid, helping them, doing the policies, trying to write the changes to the laws, marching, going out, reclaiming the night, sitting in court cases, advocating for rape victims, befriending people, driving the bus. And some people care, do it through funding, and that's absolutely brilliant, because that's what's needed. It may be the only thing that you can do to show you care. So what do you think are the greatest challenge facing us globally? Probably climate change, which is impacting on poverty and drought and famine. Um, poverty has always been the greatest challenge. Um, but also the uh, tyranny. They're all intertwined. And I've seen the work that Concern does and I'm its biggest fan. And I love to be a diplomat for Concern because I think Concern got it right. And, you know, it's organisations that have learned from the ground and they have the ear of government. Now, what more can you say? Why do you think uh people should care about supporting people who live miles and miles away from us. What I took out of the troubles and the conflict was having champions. And when you're excluded and you feel that nobody is paying any attention, when you realise you have champions, it makes you put some steel back into you to get up the next day and go on. So concern is the champions, maybe the only champions that some people in those very difficult places have in their lives. It must be the case for people in other countries to know that people back in Ireland are supporting them, um, that they care, that they're prepared to walk alongside them, they're even prepared to stand up and speak out for them. And I think that's really important. Monica, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, Kevin. You're welcome. If you want to see more of this interview, follow the link below. I'm Siham Al Hamada, Mohansa Ziraiya, from Deir Ez Zor. I'm the third of three children. We've been here for three years in Orfa. When we came to Turkey, we found a job for me and my wife. We thought of starting a project. هذا المشروع حطينا ببالنا مشروع النحل كونه احنا كنا بسوريا كان عندنا مشروع نحل والله سمعنا عن التدريب عن طريق السوشيال ميديا كان انه في اعلان انه منحه لدعم المشاريع الصغيره تمويل على التسويق على الاداره على باقي الامور الاداريه الاخرى ومشكورين يعني قبلوا فكره مشروعنا وأعطونا المنحة الله المشروع غير بحياتي الاجتماعية كثير وحالتي النفسية يعني بعد ما قعدت بالبيت بس جينا من سوريا ولا شغل ولا شيء يعني نفسيتنا تحطمت الحمد لله رجع جدد نشاطنا ورجعنا نداوم ونروح على الشغل ونجي وننتج علاقاتنا مع الأصدقاء والأقارب والجيران والعملاء اللي يأخذون منا العسل يعني صارت إن علاقات جديدة كثير ومعارف كثيرة من وراء إنه Concern's life-saving work really wouldn't be possible without the support of Irish businesses, large and small. If you've been inspired by what you've heard today and you want to get involved, whether it's a company fundraising event for your staff or building a strategic partnership that aligns with your CSR strategy, or even if it's just hosting a workshop to discuss what the UN Sustainable Development Goals mean for your company, please do get in contact either through our website or via email. Thank you. I am Syria. I'm the cold young blood of rebellion, splattered like graffiti, daring to speak. I'm the human chain of protesters, yo-yoed backwards, hugged by bullets. I'm the rubble remains of fallen homes you claw family out of. I am Somalia. I'm the Mogadishu land humming with poetry, crying for recovery. I'm your mother's bare feet on unsettled ground. I am angry rebels. I am the strapped vest full of claimed lives. I am South Sudan. I am starved children in lean ribbed skin in the land of plenty. I'm the hungry wife trekking miles of dust for another land, another home.
Hoping my thighs stay closed, but I, I am a humanity. I'm not just food and shelter, I am hope. I'm not just band-aids and kits, I am the heart that will warm yours. I'm not just another bag of rice, I am dislocating armor. I am dislodging violence. I am peace. I am the relieving sound of dropped pellets. I am the resurgence of humanity. I, I am concerned. I am human. I am us. Sustainable development goal number two reflects a commitment by the nations of the world to achieve zero hunger by the year 2030, a goal that's becoming increasingly challenging to achieve. One in every four people on this planet is food insecure, and the UN estimates that the number of hungry people in our world will reach 840 million by 2030 if we continue as is. For organisations like Concern, there's a double challenge – helping communities to cope with the food crises that are happening now and working with them to prevent future shortages. Progress in reducing global hunger over the first two decades of the 21st century was spectacular. By 2017, the number of people in our world with enough food to lead a healthy and productive life had risen by as much as 200 million, the result of a combined global effort to push back against hunger. 20 years ago, our experts developed what has become the accepted gold standard for treating acute malnutrition in babies and young children. This has helped millions of parents to effectively treat their own kids at home, a huge advantage for those who live in remote areas and carry a heavy daily burden of duties. But progress has begun to slip away, a result of the combined impacts of climate change, conflict, and now the economic fallout of the pandemic. Today, 45 million children are so malnourished that their very survival is at risk, and the UN is warning of multiple famines. Warplanes and car bombs make for dramatic headlines, but the harsh reality is that nothing kills like hunger. Disaster is not inevitable. Prevention is the best cure for hunger, and that means helping vulnerable communities to build reliable, sustainable sources of income and food. Concern partners with hundreds of thousands of families each year on projects ranging from climate smart agriculture to the promotion of nutrient rich diets, from safe drinking water systems to skills training and income development. And our emergency nutrition teams are there for those who need help now. We believe in a world without extreme poverty, without hunger. And with your support, that vision guides everything we do every day. Right now, the lives of hundreds of thousands of children are at risk, not only because of the coronavirus pandemic, but a hunger pandemic as well. Children under five are the most vulnerable, and this could devastate a generation. We have the power to make a difference by supporting organizations like Concern, with the experience and expertise to tackle malnutrition and prevent hunger. Thank you for being there and giving what you can to help save lives and support precious futures. Hi, I'm Izzy and I'm a campaigner here at Concern. Now we know that women are sadly disproportionately impacted by hunger and by poverty around the world. We've seen through our work on the ground that when food is scarce, women tend to eat the least and to eat last. One way you can have an impact on our vital work with women around the world is by joining forces with Concern and campaigning for real and lasting change. You can join our latest campaign, the Nothing Kills Like Hunger campaign, by signing our open letter to global leaders at act.concern.net. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining us for Women of Concern Changemakers and for all your input and your comments. Check out the various links and resources below and feel free to share the event recording with your friends and family and professional network. We'll leave you with a beautiful piece from Dublin-based singer-songwriter Loa, recorded on the Atlantic shoreline of Freetown in Sierra Leone. Stay safe and have a lovely day. Yeah.